Okay, now that I've unboxed the XYZ DaVinci Jr., I went and uh, put the software on it. Now, it's actually quite impressive that the XYZ printer comes with an SD card that contains the an SD card that contains the software for the XYZ software uh, to load onto your computer. So I just was able to put it into the slot in my computer and, and run a setup program from there. It then went out and checked online and found that you know there was an update, asked me if I wanted to update it, and I was able to do that very quickly. When I uh, have it had it connected uh, to the DaVinci Junior printer, it recognized it and knew that there had, was a firmware update. So it just went ahead and uh, asked me if I wanted to, and I said yes, and it, it went and updated the firmware, and all that was very automatic so well done uh, that was that was very user friendly but now on next piece of installation you have to do is the tube for the filament needs to be installed and it says to turn off the printer which I've done and um, if it's not already there move the extruder all the way to the left which in this case it is and so what happens with this tube is it goes um, actually comes out and makes a loop and goes back down in the printer in, in these areas and of course as the extruder moves from right to left it, it you know the tube can go where it needs to go uh, in this model printer the extruder moves only in one axis and then the build plate moves in the other so to install this I'm gonna put the tube down in and it's a simple press fitting you just push it in about a quarter of an inch and it stops. And then same thing here, it, there's a slot in the top of the printer on the left side here that this goes down into. And there's another similar fitting. You can even see it from the very top. You don't even need to open up the, the, um, open up the lid, but I was able to push it down that quarter inch and it snapped in place. That is a quick release fitting, so you can undo it if you need to in the future. So now that this is done, we're ready to load some filament. And I'm going to turn the printer back on for that. One of the things I do like about this printer is that it has a really nice bright LED light in there to illuminate everything so you can see it. Now, next in terms of installing filament, uh, there was a bit of a surprise. So the the way the filament installation in the XYZ printer works is they ha it's really a two-part system and requires a screwdriver to change filament, which I'm not really thrilled about because there's this little hub, which I'm going to show you here. There's a little hub um, that is a two-piece hub that you, you put together, but on either side of a spool of filament so that as you as it rotates it rotates more freely but that's not really the main purpose of it I mean you know I think anybody who has experienced any 3d printers and filament knows most filament just comes on a spool that's static and there's no added piece to help it spin well so I learned what it is when I opened it up open up the filament it came with this little chip which really you know surprised me I didn't expect that and when I opened up from the starter spool there was a chip inside of here um, that I had to remove so I am you know learned that every spool of filament from XYZ has a chip in it they call it a sensor chip and you have to assemble your the hub of the spool with the chip for that filament into it and then What's really kind of lousy about this that I don't like is you need to, you know, there's a screw and it requires a screwdriver. So uh, to change your filament to, I guess, hold that chip in there and hold the two halves of the hub together. So that was a surprise and not really something I was thrilled about. Uh, and then now once you have it on, you can just put your filament right into the spool holder here on the side and it just it goes right on there and this spins rather freely and that's nice and so now I'm going to go ahead and load the filament 
Uh, first, there's a physical component to that, and then there is a software uh, or a you know a um, something you have to do on the panel of the printer here to actually get it to load. So, and that is a very good holder of filament there. It didn't want to let go for me. All right, so before I put this back in, I'm going to cut it so it's clean. And then put it back in. So I lost my light. I guess it only stays on for a period of time. So what I'm doing is there is a specific port right here. So we can get that light to turn back on. Uh, gonna have to. There we go. I, I just pushed the up button and the light came back on. So just pushed my filament up into this little nozzle. Looks like a, you know, just a metal receptacle and there are some, um, there are actually right here some ins visual instructions. To push it up into it, you have to, you can pinch the, uh, there's a, a sort of a spring clip that you pull back to be able to push the filament in. And then once it's in, there are some settings here. And let's see. Okay, let's go back. I would have thought that, okay, there we go. So the way it is in here, there's um, settings here and under utilities, there's change spool and then under change spool is load filament. So I'm saying, okay, the extruder is going to heat and then it's going to go ahead and load the filament. And you can see it's already pulling the filament in the spool is turning so I guess it's loading it into a certain distance before it even heats up the uh, before it even heats up but you can see the fan turned on there so it really wants you to use proprietary filament I don't personally like that uh, and I think it's a pretty complicated process to have to change that hub and make sure it has the right chip so that it senses it you know, proprietary filament systems, I, I generally don't like that. I think you should be able to use any filament you want. I'm sure you can, it's just you're going to have to figure out a filament that's going to fit in there or trick the system and put an empty spool hub here with the chip and then feed another filament in another way into the printer, which would sort of be a physical hack. Uh, but I would figure out how to do that because... I just don't want to have to use the filament they supply you with. So, next after this filament is loaded, we'll start uh, building, uh, you know, setting a print off and do a time lapse video and see how the process works with their software.